stem for growth. Jude, Jude has only one chapter and we'll read verse 20. It says, but ye beloved. If you are not beloved, that scripture is not for you. But, it, but ye beloved, building up yourselves. Building up yourselves. Building up yourselves. On your most holy faith by praying. By praying. You build up yourself on your most holy faith. What does this mean? That you are growing and increasing in discernment. You are growing and in your, your faculties of interacting with the realm of the spirit are being heightened and fine-tuned in the place of prayer. One of the classic signs of prayerlessness is lack of discernment. You know immediately that a man's prayer life is dead. When your discernment is dead. What is discernment? The faculty of perception. The faculty of spiritual perception. The ability to be able to perceive the impulses of the realm of the spirit. To perceive danger. To perceive joy. To perceive the activity of angels. Are we together now? All of these things. Remember, look up please. I've taught you here that man. Can I use you please? Come doctor. Come. Um, Jake, stand here. Watch this. Man is spirit. Everybody says spirit. That man lives in a body. Man is not spirit like a separate entity. Soul like a separate entity. Then body like a separate entity. That teaching is not very accurate. Are we together? Man is a spirit primarily. That means his sphere of reality is the realm of the spirit. This spirit cannot interact with the earth realm because based on the law of territory, it must have a material body that is consistent with that ecosystem to be able to walk. Are we together now? So this spirit, if it finds its way to the earth, it will move the same way demons are moving. And so God made this spirit a legal occupant in the earth by giving it a material body. Are we together? But there, there was a challenge and God needed to solve it. Why? Because the earth realm and the realm of the spirit, they are all part of God's kingdom. But the dimensional nature of their operation makes it impossible for spirit to operate and body to come there. You cannot switch them. So there is, a, there is an issue now. The spirit cannot relate with the body because there is a disparity in the realms. And so God decided to create a bridge. The faculty that connects the spirit and the body, he called it a mind. Are we together now? That that mind consists of will, emotions, and intellect. Those faculties were put as the bridge that the spirit will use to interact with the body. And the bridge that the body will use to execute the impulses of the spirit. Now watch this. When you call man a soul, what you mean is the spirit in partnership with this faculty of consciousness. That's what is called a soul. Are we together now? If a man dies, you don't see three people coming out or two people in the air going to either heaven or hell and then you see a body lying down there. No. There is no record of that in scripture. Jesus gave up a ghost, not many ghosts. Only one spirit left that body and only one spirit returned. Are, you, are, you, are we together now? Yes. The realm of the spirit, watch this, controls the physical realm. The Bible tells us that. That the things that appear, paraphrasing, came from the things which do not appear. Remember, I never said the things that are not real. They just are unreal from this dimension. That means that Man, being spirit and dwelling in a body, has an advantage of the duality of realms. Are we together now? That dual nature is what makes the body to receive impulses that it cannot explain. So when you stand and suddenly there is a heaviness in your heart, you don't even know why. There's no joy again. It's as if the spirit man is perceiving something from the realm of the spirit and then because it is connected through the mind to the body is trying to transmute that but because please help this lady but because 
your prayer life is down. Look up, please. The, the, the fortitude to receive that perception so that the body can execute what the spirit is saying is not there. I'll give you an instance. The spirit of death can be roaming around a family. Are we together? And now, because in the realm of the spirit, there are no secrets. I hope you know. Um, there are secrets, but what I mean is that nothing is hidden, really. There are secrets even in the spirit, but nothing is hidden. Are we together? Now, watch this. When the spirit of death is roaming around, your spirit is perceiving it. Your spirit knows. The spirit of death knows. If you came out of your body in the realm of the spirit, you will no longer be in a vision. Ah, death, what are you doing here? Say, ah, I've been here. You see that I'm, I'm not just coming. I've been there. But because the body was unfruitful. Excuse me. Are we together? The body was unfruitful. So when you begin to pray, what happens is that there is a rearranging. Because the way the flesh works, it, it attempts to subjugate the spirit to a point where it cannot gain that ascendance. This is where the advantage of things like fasting and so on and so forth can come in. Are we together now? All of this we are going to discuss. But generally, this man, the spirit of death is loitering around his vicinity. And he's moving around because he's deadened in the flesh. His organs of perceiving. Imagine in the physical that you cannot hear. Hello? You cannot um, smell. You cannot see. You cannot sense. Are you alive? Are we together now? Yes. You are not alive. Because I can be killing you and you are not aware. The only thing you just know that you are fainting. And then you go into coma and die. Because the ability is not there. I can be talking to you, supplying an information you cannot hear. The same way there are physical senses, there are also spiritual senses. And that these spiritual senses, the same way you have blindness, you can have spiritual blindness. Deafness, you can have spiritual deafness. Are we together? Yes. The same way your body, I don't know the name of what the sickness is, where people don't feel when you touch them. You can have that same thing too in the realm of the spirit. So even if the Holy Spirit is saying, Mr. Man, you are, not, you are not there at all. And the Bible says, I'm explaining to you that when you begin to pray, what is happening is that there is a fine tuning. The spirit, your spirit man, begins to gain ascendance. And you can stand and just sense and know. And because your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit is heightened, you, it, the Holy Spirit is at liberty based on the strength of your spirit man to use whatever faculty he pleases to reveal to you what to do. So he can use your hearing and you hear. He can use your seeing, you will see a vision. He can use the knowing in your heart and you come with perception. He can even move you into his will. The more you pray, you are giving the Holy Spirit the versatility of options to be able to communicate the will of God to you. Are you getting what this scripture is saying now? That means that people who don't pray, imagine that this guy is blind spiritually, deaf on one ear spiritually, are we together? Cannot sense anything. Look at the little allowance the Holy Ghost has to communicate destiny things to him. So you can have a dream, but because you are spiritually blind, you will see nonsense. You will get up from that dream and write things that was not really what was revealed. Why? Because the problem is blindness. Remember, Paul was blind, but he was still seeing. He was, he was in a vision. He said, when you understand this, prayer is no longer about give me tea, give me bread. You are saying, Holy Spirit, you are at the mercy of my faculties of interaction. Your, your possibilities are limited by the space I give you. Could it be that if you were prayerful and you became sensitive, you would have been able, not just something dangerous, you would have been able to know. Let me tell you this, when you become very sensitive, the Holy Spirit, depending on the gravity of what he's communicating, he can use multiple channels to strengthen your conviction. Very powerful what I'm sharing with you. We pray because it is a platform for growth and transformation. I will never forget how 
koinonia started we were already you know doing ministry and doing a lot of things but i just knew that for some reason a season was about to come to a close and another season would start everybody say perception that's right that's what happens and it's not enough to perceive you can perceive and what you perceive is unfruitful to you because you don't know what it is and you don't know what to do about it are we together and i remember that time i just got up one morning happy blessing the lord for the day and suddenly the lord just summoned me go for a retreat immediately i just packed my things people you are not seeing me again the lord is calling me now what if i got there and god said i don't know why you are here who asked me see i pray for you sincerely may god have many options on how to communicate his intents to you may look at me i'm going to be ah, i wish oh dear holy spirit grant us grace let's see what we can do i will be showing you from this teaching that if you are blind spiritually and suddenly without growth and renewal satan can give you an aberration of vision and show you something see a faculty that god is not used to leading you with he will never use it on sensitive matters of your life this is one way you know you are under attack already let me give you an example watch this do you know that i will be showing you as we continue that every believer based on your personalized work with god god has studied you and for every season there is a primary channel of spiritual communication the most accurate that god has found based on your renewal when you change seasons and you grow he will readjust too so there are people who god has found out that based on his work with them dreams are the most powerful way of releasing the fullness of his will and then they believe in it because it's one thing for God to release an impulse through a channel. But if your reception is wrong, you will corrupt the purposes of God. It's hard work what the Holy Ghost does in men. So he has to keep trying. That's why there are many times it's like you had something, but you are not clear. God is testing those faculties and seeing your response. Are we together now? It's as if I had something. And you are not serious about it. And God said, ah, no. if we walk with these guys hearing, something is going to be wrong. Let's go back to the dream. And it's better to fight the warfare there and fight through the dream. Are you now seeing why a dream was used for Joseph? Now watch this. Many believers have not been used to God speaking in a certain way. And then when it now comes to major decisions in their lives, the devil will now use a method. Uh -uh. The way you kill the bear, the way you kill the lion, is how you will also kill Goliath. When Saul gave him another arsenal, David said, I'm not used to this. I was not trained with this. How you were trained is how you will fight the battle. So when God trains you, listen, please, this series is very powerful. Listen. God trains you and finds out that the way you are, the environment you came from, the unbelief there is too great. The strongest point until you marry and leave that environment, a dream remains the most valid way of his communicating. Your hearing will always be in error because the environment cannot allow you to grow that way. God will limit himself to that thing. You will find out that 90% of your hearing will be nonsense. So when we have a responsibility as believers to study the various channels of spiritual communication versus our believing them and the results, over time, if you study this, you can know that when God says, release your best arsenal to hear me, you know what to release. There are people, this their ears is like a magnet. There is, if God speaks, even if God speaks from Bangila, they will hear. They have sharpened their ears. 
But if God shows them anything, they, are, they will not see. So God will limit his walking to their ears. There are others. Look at prophets in the Bible. There were others who were seers. There were others who were not just hearing alone. Please help them, those under the anointing. They were not just hearing, listen, look up please. And they were not just seeing. But these were people who God will make them act what he wants to do. Physical acting so that they cannot doubt it. A prophet was asked to lie down on one side of the bed for one year. A prophet was made to marry a prostitute called Goma to act out the harlotry of the nation of Israel. You cannot doubt that one now. Ah. By wisdom, O oh God, heaven's gates open now. With understanding, you order the sea. Created day and night, turning darkness into light, arranging the stars to your feet. Blessed are you, O Lord, our eternity's holy King. Blessed are you. Listen, part of what prayer does to you, we've not started dealing with the patterns of prayer. We are just examining why we should pray. You have to, the way God will tell you wear this shirt today. He cannot use the same thing to say relocate to the US. The gravity of if if I don't wear the shirt that God wants me to wear today, the consequence will not be as grave. As God saying, my destiny is in the U.S. and I'm in Nigeria. So he will not use the same channel. He needs to use the channel that sends the strongest signal so you can receive. Look at this. One of the hardest things for the saints is to know when seasons end. Let me tell you, the proof of real stamina in prayer and in the spirit is the ability to discern when seasons end. It's a very difficult thing. That's why many ministries cannot grow. Because to know when you need to shift, to know when you need to relocate, to know when you need to start the TV ministry, your spiritual maturity is not tested in word of knowledge and prophecy. The ability to know that you have gotten to a crossroad in the spirit, I tell you, you can start another journey. For 10 years, you can be accurate in life and in ministry, and you just veer off. That's how you see someone who say, I'm a prophet today, tomorrow, and then he's confused. Our channels, listen, this, this duality of realms is where the confusion is. Because the way the realm of the spirit works, sit down for a few minutes, we are going to pray. The way the realm of the spirit works, listen to me, and the way the physical realm works is not correct. Or, or it, it does not work at the same um, frequency. Watch this. There are times if your spirit is healthy, and it's in partnership with the Holy Spirit. There are times that Satan, who is the master of the flesh realm, will create emergency in the earth realm. But when you check in the realm of the spirit, your spirit man is at peace. And he said, forget it. Nothing is really going on. If you don't know this, you will panic over everything. So when your spirit is strong, even when there are all kinds of things, you cross-check. Once the spirit is not betting anything, no matter what is happening here, you ignore it. This is why many people are stable. Satan knows that this, this faculty that connects you has a serious issue there. So he will play with water in the physical realm. And all of a sudden, when that is happening, you are just seeing everything shaking. Hey, and then the spirit of fear is trying to manipulate you. But when your spirit is strong, you know how to cross-check. When there is an emergency in the realm of the spirit, sometimes there can be absolute peace in the earth realm. And so you find out that God is telling you, start running. And you say, God, but there is peace here. He's saying, run, run. There is trouble. And in, suddenly, 
the cloud of darkness just comes to cover people. See, I tell you why many people do not pray. It is not your fault. It is the ritual. This is what I'm trying to correct. I have watched this for many years. Many believers pray and they do not achieve much in prayer because they do not understand the scope, the boundaries, nor the importance of effective prayer. There are people today who have gone to the grave simply because they did not strengthen the capacity to function in these dual dimensions. That which is spiritual, that which is spirit, is of the spirit is spirit, and that which is of the earth is earth. Way before your boss starts to threaten you, the realm of the spirit has picked the signal. Why? Because it's already seen the formation of evil spirits. It is the manifestation of the patterns that kept your father down. And six months before your boss starts acting out, the Holy Ghost is already sending the signal. But because you're, you had the dream, but you didn't understand what it... Ah, I know that I wrote an exam, but I did not finish the exam. What did it mean? You don't know, and because your faculty of interaction is not there, you just sit down. It's not about an exam. These are ways, they are speakings of the Spirit. Let me tell you this. One of the hardest assignments of the Holy Spirit is to transfer the will of God from the heart of the Father to the mind of the saints. It is difficult. That's why when God finds one man who is aligned, you better stay out of the life and the way of that man. He will clear you for, because he knows how hard it is. Jesus, Jesus, your Jesus, is looking at the disciples and they are wondering why he's looking at them. And he's seeing Satan looking for a particular disciple to enter. Jesus is asking them a question Who do men say that I am? And they are all laughing. No discernment. And yet Satan just came quietly and hijacked Peter's faculty. And Jesus is still watching. And the Peter himself is happy. Oh, you will not go to the cross. And Jesus looks and says, Get thee behind me, Satan. And Peter looks at me, Satan. He said, Peter, let me tell you the drama that has been happening that you are not even aware of. All the while I was looking at you, something was happening in the realm of the spirit. Satan continued to desire to sift you like wheat. He says, It is my prayer that saved you. I have prayed for you. That you faint not, he said, and when thou art converted, strengthen your brethren. There are many believers that pray, but they are not transformed. Because they don't know what happens. You have ears in the spirit. You have eyes in the spirit. You have faculties of interaction. The only thing is that, now respectfully speaking, people like Kenneth E. Hagin taught of course knowledge revelation is progressive our fathers like kenneth e hagen taught that we have five spiritual senses just like we have five physical senses well that may be two as at the time the revelation came but there are no five it's not five spiritual senses we have there are many spiritual senses that that um do not easily have physical expressions that's why all of them will be grouped and will just manifest as the same thing you would think you are having the same experience. When I was praying yesterday, my hands were hot. When I was praying today, my hands were hot. Your body interpreted it as heat, but they were two different things. It's just because your body is now limited. It cannot, it cannot express every impulse of the spirit. Hallelujah. Is that drizzling? If it's raining, we can, we can do what we did last week. Please, if we can walk people in, um, the season is almost gone. So please, let them come in. Let's make whatever sacrifice. Please sit down. Pray in tongues for one minute and then I continue. We'll find somewhere.
This is a very serious series, especially in the days that we live in. Only you can satisfy me. Only you can satisfy my soul. Satisfy my soul. says, let him that has an ear. That means it is possible that you don't have that ear. Son of man, he said, what seest thou? He said, an almond tree. He said, you have seen correctly. You can see wrongly. Please pay attention. We are going to pray. A platform for growth